a hot cheese crunchy mac and cheese. So we're starting with these. Okay, we got some milk going here, nice and warm. And how do you extract that that fiery kind of slightly sweet from the corn flavor in here? What are you about to do? We are making a hot cheese crunchy sachet. Stop oh god. Never yeah. been done before. Uh, a bouquet Sorry. crunchy? Oh my god. A bouquet crunchy. A bouquet crunchy. <laughs> so much like you would like aromatics and herbs you put in there to steep through a soup or a sauce or whatever without getting the solid bits in there, we're going to do the same thing with some cheesecloth. Put it in here, wrap it up, Sonny, goodness. take the other half, uh, just pulverize them in that okay. bag, please. So you take a little butcher twine. I wish you would have told me about this because one time I bought a case of these because I'm addicted uh -huh. and it must have been a wonky case because five or six of the bags just had huge nuggets of the flavor. Yes. Just huge flavor nuggets that At didn't. At the bottom? Yeah, that didn't get Wait, like. you bought a case of these? A well, case of bags? I'm like, on the oh, internet, okay? I, you I got, you know, what can Sonny I say? Andy, <laughs> keeping the American economy. You can't uh, find them at every gas list. station. You know, you can't find them at every grocery store or gas station. So that's so what great. I got some whole milk in here, and we're going to add that in. What better way to introduce new flavors and experiences like spice to kids than mac and cheese forms, right? It's a very yeah. familiar vehicle. So what we discover that is you can kind of see it happening for whatever's in that bag of hot cheese crunchies starts turning the milk a little pink, right? So yeah. how do we kind of bump up that orange flavor that we're all oh, used to? Yeah, because we want it really orange. We don't want like a medicinal No, pink. looking pink, right? So we're yeah. adding some annatto. Oh. Smart. Right? Now, this is, uh, this is what it looks like. It comes from the achote tree, and it's these little uh, seeds from the yep. fruit in there, and it's used in a lot of foods. It's totally food safe, all natural way to kind of color American your cheese, food. Right? American cheese, cheddar, cheddar cheese. cheese. Yeah. Uh, the outside of Munster cheese. Yep. So, yep. and it's also uh, formed in a paste. You know, they it's grown regionally in Mexico, in Brazil, and stuff. And they so they use it in a lot of those foods too. Al pastor, a lot Al of uh, you know chote paste in there. So we're gonna let this steep for a little bit, get all that flavor out, and what we're, we got the annatto seeds in there. Season it up, and this is what it looks like. Oh. When we are done. Whoa. You did that? Can you hand cut this? Yep. I got some uh, the trifecta of mac and cheese cheeses here. Some cheddar, of course, for sharpness. Creaminess. We got some slices from the deli of American cheese, okay. and that was Fontina cheese you just grated. It was so you got delicious. Creamy, you got sharpness, and you got. American. What do you want? I love this. You want some like ribbons? <laughs> yeah, just ribbons. It's all gonna ribbons. melt. So we can see that sachet kind of got all that flavor of those hot cheese crunchies in there. No need to open this. <laughs> it's a Pandora's box of weirdness, but we love it because it did its job in here, right? So we got the super flavored milk, which we're gonna add to our what, Jeffrey? Our roux here, because we are making this hot cheese crunchy bechamel. You love it, Sonny, you're almost done there. You know it. So we got equal parts here, butter and flour, quarter cup each, and this is three cups of milk, so this is the perfect ratio for that. Silky texture, kind of still tight, but still kind of gooey, right? And you just add that warm flavored milk, to the roux. Jeff, I gotta know what Sarah thought when you made this. She's There's measuring some... her chicken breast and her salad. This does not seem like a tomorrow I've recipe. It is definitely not. I'm excited. I literally have seen this on the internet. I, I follow a couple of food pages, and they have these places in Cali where you can go get the mac and cheese in one of those takeout mm -hmm. aluminum foil circular, and it's just, the top is just laden with the crunchies. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? With a beautiful cheese pull. So you'll see, we didn't do a lot because my son is 11. He's not like, you know, putting hot sauce on everything. Yep. This was a great way, you know, he loved it because it was, it's mild and it's sweet and it's fun and it's bright red, right? You know, so we're gonna add the cheese. Oh, that looks good. Right in there. Don't forget the cheddar. Cheddar. Sharper the better, I think, just I for flavor, right? You know why, you know. Gotta go up against that pasta. Yeah, which we're using, elbow mac. And what that American cheese does, why I think it's pretty necessary, it does help emulsify the other cheeses together. The classic, I always right? want Come the on. elbow mac. You know, I at the end of the, the day, elbow. if I can't eat mac and cheese with a spoon, it's probably not for me, right? So this is all gonna melt. Good Look color. Be, great great color. color, right? That's the annatto in there. Good right? old annatto. Experiments with that. Rather than pulling out the little squeeze bottle of red, then you can get in a little trouble. Okay, so we're gonna put super al dente yep. elbow mac right in there. And we're just gonna take it off the heat and stir it. I got my oven at 350. Wow. Mm. You got your crunchy, cheesy tops there? Yep, yep. Waiting oh, for you and ready yeah. to go. I mean, look at that ratio already. 
You're right. It's kind of that perfect uh, combination of baked mac and cheese and stovetop mac and cheese. I, I love both. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes you just got to make a quick bechamel and make it happen on the stovetop. Mm -hmm. But if you've got time to throw it in the oven and let everything Ooh, come together, look at that. That is a crazy color. It, it is, is crazy. So crazy. It matches the napkins. <laughs> it looks like a supercharged cheddar cheese, though. It, it does, does, right? All right. So now we're gonna top it with more hot cheese crunchies. Texture time. All right. Crunchy on ten. Just so you can obviously go harder in the paint. Bananas depending on this. Depending on what you want, right? Exactly. So this is going in the oven, 350 for about 10, 15 minutes, just to kind of bubble up. Everything's already cooked. Sonny, I got it. You stay right yeah, there. Yeah, I'm just gonna clean up. Yeah, you clean up Get ready for, me. for me. Get rid of this bouquet crunchy. Bouquet crunchy. <laughs> and here you go. These things can burn fast, so keep an eye on this, especially if you're just gonna broil Whoa, it, right? Oh, right here, buddy. Oh, land it. Cheese, crunchy, mac and cheese. Yes. Straight from the Morrow kitchen to Mr. Zakarian's mouth. Look at, look look at, at you, what do you think? What's going through your head there, buddy? Just look we've at, had so oh. many sensations today of color and texture. Look at that. It's been uh, a color that. and texture sensation day. Yeah. That's what we do. Well, <laughs> There you go. Okay, well, I got a quarter I haven't piece had for this you. yet. Like, I'm, as right. many times as I've seen it online, you'd think I well, would try and make cleanup. it at home. Thank you, Jeff, for doing the work. Well, hey, you this know what? Awesome. This is a, uh, I don't know, to me it's. You know what, Jeff? This is really good. It's spicy, but not overpowering. Nice, creamy, cheesy sauce. And then, like, you get that back heat. It comes in at the end. And I love the little crunchy bits on top.